We've got all your reactions to the DJ Moore explosion from last night, breaking down more matchups. We've got the fantasy face-off. We've got an embarrassing outfit that I will have to uh, put on to my body, and you don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you like, subscribe, and you'll catch Mike on Sunday Live as well. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday edition, the Fantasy Footballers. Mike, Jason, and Andy, excited to talk fantasy football with you, get you on the right track for week five. <laughs> if you can if you're not already on the wrong wrong track for week five. Yeah, this, this Wait, it's uh, still week five? <laughs> oh man, not for all of us. There are some of us who have moved on. Well, uh first headline, the end of a three day saga. Jason Moore back in a hat. Uh, yeah. now that he's gotten the haircut. That allows you to re-enter the hat. That is correct. I don't need to get a haircut because I'm going to wear a hat. But every now and then, you got to go to a place. Maybe you're not allowed to wear a hat mm -hmm. there. You need to be now able when to you, do your hair. When you finally made it into this uh, barber stylist, did you? Did they kind of, you know, drop confetti, throw you a party for not having a hat on when you entered? Yes, uh, she did. Uh, she had the confetti cannon. Uh, ironically, she did the social media thing. Where she shot the balloon ahead. Uh, oh, and it dropped and the then stuff. confettied me in the face. So it made it a, a nightmare to cut my hair. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, it's very <laughs> ironic. Uh, so that I mean that saga is over. You've gotten the haircut and you've got the hat back on. And and then the other, the, you know, we have a we have a sixty point game last night to talk about the Bears forty, Commanders twenty. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there there was <laughs> there's so much to discuss. Uh, uh, yep. We had a monstrous uh, lifetime performance from DJ Moore, eight for two thirty and three <laughs> on ten targets. Uh, Justin Fields was two eighty two and four, no interceptions, no turnovers. Mm. Eleven for fifty seven on the ground. Eleven rushing attempts. Yes, sir. And uh, well, the, you know, it's been a rough start to the season for our good friend Al Borland sitting over there in Deucer's Alley. Al has, uh, I think you've quit fantasy eight, ten times so far. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And <laughs> uh, in there. part of his uh, his roster investment this year that we, you know, coming coming into the season, we were like, this is a great team. This man drafted very well. Well, he had the Justin Fields, DJ Moore stack, and uh, through four weeks, he has the least points scored in the league. And then had last night happened, and I'm sitting there, I'm see, I'm watching what's happening, and and Al is rejoicing in our slack channel and uh he's talking not safe for work i mean and he is he's he, filthy he is fully filth, excited filth machine and just glo just gloating and then i realize he's facing the fantasy hitman mike is yeah. his matchup for the week yeah. i was just i thought it was just a pure uh a celebration until i realized that there was a man in a deep dark pit <laughs> A pit of despair who had 92 points yep. hung on him last which, night. Which, for context of the league of record, 92 points from his two players, mm -hmm. 92 points would have beaten three teams last week. <laughs> and if he adds, let's say, eight to nine points from the remainder of his squad, that would have beaten half of the league last week. He outscored his own team from last week. <laughs> On Thursday night. So, so Mike is got. What are, what are you guys doing on Sunday? <laughs> you guys looking for listen, something to do? Yeah. There are people listening. Want to like, hit like the links? Yeah. I mean, Mike is free. Anybody out there, <laughs> you need somebody, you need a wingman, you want to, you got need someone to go to a wedding I, with you? I am very open. So, my <laughs> schedule cleared out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a massacre. And, <laughs> Mike is not alone. I mean, uh, we we've, oh. we've heard from so oh. many of you facing. Yeah, I heard from a lot of people. Oh, I played against DJ Moore. I'm like, 
So what? <laughs> <laughs> I played against both. I played against both of them. So I, so my, my carcass has already been taken, and I am I am no more. I am just ashes. Been, yeah, you've been cremated. Yes. You're you're beautiful. The beautiful vase. The ceremony already happened. I'm I'm done. Mike's final words on the Slack <laughs> channel last night came after the throwaway final touchdown, and it was just what the f. <laughs> Never heard from him again. He disappeared into the mist. Uh, look, I feel good. I feel good that we told people not to drop Justin Fields. Jason, you were very vocal about, um, you know, we said chase last week with Fields and more. Mm -hmm. And then if you wanted to chase Herbert and Komet, you can. It worked out in the sense that Komet was 5 for 42, got in the end zone again. Herbert was very good oh, before man. the injury. Herbert was 10 for 76, and he didn't play a whole game. And like, I've never seen a – The dude was balling. I've never seen a running back room where – Travis Homer, Khalil yeah. Herbert, Rashawn Johnson all went out in the same game, and the back half of the game was all the fullback. <laughs> Blazing game. <laughs> yeah, so on the other side, I was telling the guys before that, you know, Sam Howell was the start of the week. And let me tell you, being on Twitter. Uh, uh, for you. <laughs> be, being on Twitter at halftime, y'all weren't nice. <laughs> but he ends up 388 and two. That's uh, a great game. He, he passed the ball 51 times. Logan Thomas was 9 for 77 and a touchdown. The leader in the re receiving room was Curtis Samuel. What wasn't good is, look, this team did not run the ball at all in the second half no, because they the game script was over with. So Brian Robinson had six first-half carries, the end of the story. Um, yeah. Six for 10 in the first half. And, six for, and the game. So the Six for 10. Hal, Hal had the garbage time, big game. Uh, which was nice to see Thomas had the good game. Otherwise, the storyline is is the distribution of targets yeah. in Washington is a disaster. They passed the ball 51 times, and 10 of the 51 passes went to Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dotson. Yeah, you, you really want a consolidation of targets for uh, an offense for fantasy football, and this was this was not that. Uh, Brian Pringle got targets. Diami Brown got targets. John Bates got targets. Jamison Crowder. Didn't what? know he was still playing football. What? He you, got targets. Like, what are you doing, Washington? Eleven it, different receivers received targets. Yeah, that's that is, and that that can be fine for the NFL. I mean, you've seen Matt Ryan go out there and distribute it to you know a bunch of different players and have a great game. But we're selfish. We're playing fantasy football, and this is not good for fantasy football. It's not just about being selfish. It's your your two best offensive weapons are Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. Yes. And oh, Dotson had that one-handed 40-yard catch that was out of bounds, too. That was a bummer. They, they are great players, and you have to figure out. Like, if Chicago's looking at this going, yeah, cool. Yeah. Go ahead, distribute the ball to your entire team. Get everyone involved. A nice pat on the back. We're going to make sure that your elite players don't beat us. And You know who's not breaking off successful. a tackle and running 40 <laughs> yards for a touchdown? John Bates. Or James Jameson Crowder. Crowder. No, that's exactly it. The after the catch stuff. The um, you know, McLaurin drew two deep pass interference penalties because why? You targeted him. Yep. It, it he's probably breaking the record for most um PIs this year. I feel like every time he's targeted, they get a PI. It's weird. I'm not impressed with Eric Bienemy and the offense. No. the um, enemy of offense. I feel like Sam Howell kind of salvaged the day by himself. Um standing in there taking hits, uh, sacked five times, breaking through tackles. There you go. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Well, every Friday we give away a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com. And today's winner, Yoda Man. Now, is that like, the character from Star Wars, Yoda, but he's a man? Or is that like, you are the man, like Yoda man? I think it is, in fact, both. It's up for Ooh, interpretation. Incredible work, Yoda. So uh, we give away $100 to somebody <laughs> that supports the Gift show. Card I have. <laughs> from jointhefoot.com. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, congratulations. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. 
Well, the headline news right now, Amon Ross St. Brown, the abdomen injury, missed Thursday and missing two days practice. Not good. He said his goal is to play. His head coach came out this morning and said they will update us on the status of Amon Ross St. Brown uh, in the next 24 hours. So they don't know if he's going – I genuinely think that's kind of the situation is that Dan Campbell is waiting uh, to find out if – the medical team clears him if he's capable of playing, and we will find out. Yeah, I, I do think at this point there are a, a handful of names that you might want to just start over him if he's active. Uh, I'm I, Obviously, Amon Ra is a great player. We talked about how tough he is. He'll play through injuries. I'm not saying that if he plays, you bench him. Garrett you, Wilson. Exactly. Garrett Wilson is one of the names I would do. Nico Collins I would do. Uh, Calvin Ridley. I think I go all the way DJ down. DJ Moore. <laughs> DJ Moore. <laughs> hope you yeah. did that one. Um, I, you know, I, I go all the way down to probably Marquise Brown, where he's been involved oh, I, and I the agree. Cardinals would be good. Yeah. Um, usually I would always start Amon Ra over, you know, the, those other names. But when you're factoring in this injury, if he's active, he might be hampered and limited. And this is kind of a situation that could resemble what happened with the 49ers this last week where you had Debo Samuel who was injured, missed practice, was active. And I do believe that if they needed him, he could have performed. But Christian McCaffrey went ham. Uh, the 49ers did not need Debo to do anything. And this is the type of game at home against the Carolina Panthers, the winless Panthers, where you could see a situation where it's like, hey, we don't really need to force the ball to Amon Ra. We're not having to pick up these tough third downs uh, you know, we, we're we're smoking them. Maybe we give him a little bit more rest. So that's why I would I would sit there and go, okay. I I think these other players are decent starts this week. So I I would rather get my guaranteed, you know, eight, nine, ten points. Yeah, it makes sense. Damian Pierce back to a full participant, so that's nice. Ramondre stayed limited on Thursday. Back to back limited. Uh, the vibes around Ramondre right now are very bad. Mm -hmm. The over under is very low. The defenses are very good. So Ramondre is another person in that category of if you need to play him, you can. If you have other options, it may be pivot o'clock, Mike. Yeah, it's – yes, I'm, I'm on the plan of next week. Jonathan Taylor, full participant in Thursday's practice. I would say that we are handicapping his odds of playing at – I'm going to put him at 98%. Where are you guys at? Right around there. Yep. Kenny Pickett upgraded a full participant. Uh, he's going to be back. What? Uh, they're expecting him to start <laughs> home game, Baltimore. Kenny Pickett. Oh, okay. That de-escalated quickly. Yeah, it did. <laughs> well, he's going to be up for the season. No, it looks like it's just a couple of weeks. Well, it's just a bone bruise. It's just a few moments. It's just, yeah, <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> few, so A few moments. What? He did not miss practice. What? A lot of people would have had surgery, though. Right. Mac Jones right. mentioned No, Mac that. Jones would not have had surgery. Mm. Mac Jones would not have left the game. Uh, <laughs> all right, Cooper Cup logged to full practice, expected to play barring setbacks. Yeah, I mean, Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor are starting this week, and they should be started for your rosters. Good news here. Javante Williams returned to practice on Thursday. Good news unless you dropped 40 fab on Jaleel McLaughlin. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even sure. Like, I think this is primarily bad news for fantasy football. Because people haven't been excited to start Javante. You right. know what I mean? It hasn't gone well. So yeah, it's not like the Javante good. managers are going like, now it's like, oh, no, i got to make a decision. If he was out, it's like, okay. And everybody just picked up McLaughlin. So it's like, I think this is just bad news. I mean, it's good for the health. Of yeah, well, Al, do you need uh, Javante this week? Yeah, that decision is, is less stressful for me now. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I dare you to bench him. <laughs> He'd be fine. He could probably bench a couple oh, more Oh, man, players. if he benches two guys... <laughs> Just goes too empty on you. Uh, he hey, will win. Headline news, but not headline news because it doesn't matter. Chase Claypool traded to the Dolphins. A 6-7 swamp for the player traded for the number 32 overall pick last year. Bravo, Pittsburgh, for what you did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you stole mm -hmm. from Chicago. You, they knew what they had, and they were able to get out. Pittsburgh did a great job. Once you had Chase Claypool, the Bears realized what they had. And they got out. So I expect him to be cut from the Dolphins real soon. So Nothing like Robbie Anderson or Chosen. Or Robbie, Robbie Chosen. chosen. Yep. It, goodness gracious. And Chase Claypool, you know, down at the bottom of your depth chart hanging out. Let this be 
a uh, something you can look at when you're when you have people in your fantasy league that want to veto trades. Just remember, the NFL let Chase Claypool be traded for the 32nd overall pick. Mm-hmm. Oh and, yeah, so the- and no one in the NFL said a thing about it. They, they just, should have passed the veto around. <laughs> they they let the grown ups manage their team. Most people knew it was a oh. dumb decision, but they let it happen. You know <laughs> that the Ravens organization, when that trade went through, they went, oh, come on. Yeah, for, for sure. That's not fit. They would have vetoed Pittsburgh it. a first. <laughs> they were but, under, it was uh, a second, Jason. Yeah. Well, yes, the, the wink, 32nd wink. pick, yeah. which was a second, uh, technically. Well, there you go. Uh, by the way, a uh, very humorous little note here from Al Borland. Mike, uh, he said that you can pick his flex for him. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. I'll let you know on uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, there you go. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Well, I mean, you could come back, Mike, if Christian McCaffrey scored five touchdowns, which you know he's capable of doing. Yes, and well, it's, but it's more of the rest of Owl's team has to just completely tank the the week. I don't know if Al will see him ever again if that were to happen. Though. <laughs> um, oh man, I I am now. <laughs> yeah, I am now rooting so hard against you, Jeremy. And 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 before no. this happened, I would certainly have wanted you to beat Mike. Not anymore. I'm I'm on team Mike. Let's go, baby. I don't blame you. You may need to pivot out of Latavius Murray's uh, in your RB two though. I mean, the, I don't know uh, if the ceiling um, for Latavius is going to get it done for you. There's not many other options. <laughs> That's one of those ones where you just play like you play Jordan Mason alongside Christian McCaffrey <laughs> and just ride 49er touchdowns. Um, part two of our fantasy forecast, getting into the matchups. Part one on yesterday's show. And uh, we're jumping in. Pittsburgh, or I'm sorry, Philadelphia, 4-0. Traveling to take on the Los Angeles Rams, who are 2-2. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Eagles, minus four. The over-under is 50 points. Okay, I'll take it. Easily my favorite game of the week. It is also... Oh, Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. It's also going to be a a good game. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm excited for this one, like you said. Uh... Jalen Hurts, Matthew Stafford at quarterback. Stafford only has three touchdowns in the first three games. He's not been good for fantasy. He has been good as an NFL quarterback. He's been great as an NFL quarterback. I, I, you know, he's thrown some interceptions. He, he does that. But you, you watch the speed of the ball coming out of his hand, the angles he's Mm -hmm. throwing out. You know, there was stepping up through the pocket, worry of health, and and he is a little bit banged up from last week, but he still looked absolutely amazing. He's on pace for 5,200 passing yards. He has made Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell into stars. And now he gets Cooper Cup back, who has been his touchdown machine. Did you see the video yesterday, either of you guys, of um, Cooper Cup at practice and them running the no, running I, the step drill? I heard about it. I okay, heard. so they're running, they're running a very, um, like a standard quick feet drill around uh, the cones, like a straight line quick feet drill. And... Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua do the drill back to back, and it was like the preseason video of Calvin Ridley running the route and Zay oh, Jones no. running the route. Like Puka Nakua is amazing. What Cooper Cup did in the ra- in the in the drill was like, oh, <laughs> oh, you're that good. Yeah, I remember this guy. Yeah, so uh, he'll have a full assortment of weapons: Cup, Nakua, Atwell, Higby, all four of those players, including and Kyron Williams are all in play. For those of you, <laughs> did you see it? I'm watching it now. Oh, Puka. I don't know that. Like, it's not his drill, I it's guess. It's not his drill. Like I, I, I think, Or that's how they all look other than Cooper Cup. Cooper, I don't know. I think it's a Puka problem. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. It looks so slow and bad. I think I can do it better. No, oh, it's it's not as fast as uh, Mr. Cup. But I think when people see the Philadelphia matchup, you're still reacting to last year. But this year, the Eagles defense, 26 against quarterbacks, 28th against wide receivers, 31st against tight ends. Other than stopping the run, they've essentially been one of the worst defenses in terms of fantasy production against them. So 
you know, I don't I don't think you have another option. You know, Kyron Williams went 27 points last week. I think you keep playing him. They seem to give the ball to their running backs around the goal line, and then they have success so far this year. So is there any real hesitation around any option in, in Los Angeles? Not for me. And they're at home. Yeah. yeah the, so I do, I do have a little bit of worry, you know, with Cooper Cup now seeming like he's going to come back and play. You know, we've talked about who is that wide receiver who's the odd man out. Is it Puka? Is it Tutu? And I know, Mike, you, you like Tutu as a start this week. Just because it's Cooper's first game back. I, I think in the long run that Tutu is the one that loses the snaps. I do too, but I think that I think Cooper Cup comes back and plays a full allotment. Like, uh, plays 90% of his normal role. So, I guess I'm hesitant to start Tutu. That that that's, would be my only fair. my only hesitation on, on that side. Jalen Hurts is in. DeAndre Swift, stay in the flames. Yeah, Last I'm, three games, RB2, 13 and 11. Yesterday I tweeted out there are uh, there's one player who is stuffed more than anybody else in the league. Twenty five percent of the time, Najee Harris is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. He's the high. That's why you think film he, checks out. He think you think he's bad because you watch him get stuffed on one quarter of his runs. The least stuffed player thus far in the NFL is DeAndre Swift. He has been stuffed five percent of the time. Whenever they show the film from the angle of, you know, behind the quarterback, it's unbelievable what this offensive line is doing. I mean, you it's could just, fit. I could fit of, in that <laughs> hole. The, yes, I would be. I wouldn't be able to, like, I'm make it go far, with the city bus, right? but, but uh, I could fit through it. And yeah, that's impressive. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, play him. I'm a wide man. Uh, you know, uh, you story actually, time. Okay, yeah, you story are. Time. You're a wide man. I am a wide man. Are you okay. talking about the bathroom? I'm talking about the bathroom. Yeah, do it. All right, here we go. Shocking. So we have three bathrooms at our studio now, and um, sometimes you know the there, there there's an A, a P, and a C bathroom. Of course. You know? I, you, and so I want I want the creme de la creme uh, uh, potty room, um, but also I hate the one next door to it. I hate it. Which I I never understood. Yeah, this whole time, I'm like, why? Still, it's solid. I was like, why oh, can't you pivot? It's solid. Well, this is the point. I'm learning. I learned. So I brought up to them. I'm like, look, I I, I, I was transparent and vulnerable, and I said, it happens to you guys too, right? And they're like, what? I go, your leg like runs into the toilet paper dispenser <laughs> where the toilet paper roll is like is like in your way, right? And they're like, no, it's never been in my way. And I'm just thinking, well, they that's, that's the pee bathroom. They don't sit down in there. So you guys just have an experience that you don't remember. So me and Andy and Papa Josh, all clothed, went into the bathroom and sat down on the toilet to test to see if your legs run into the toilet paper because there's no way it doesn't for them. I'm not like a humongous 500-pound, <laughs> you know, monster. I'm just, I'm just wide. And so I go down and Andy sits down and he's got long legs. No problem. Doesn't run into it. Uh -huh. Josh sits down. No issue. No issue. I sit down. I'm just sitting normal. I, I don't feel like I'm <laughs> no, like. You're not. You don't have like a wide stance. No, I'm not like. <laughs> it's a normal you know, stance. Spread eagle on the toilet here. I'm just sitting down. And my Doing leg. stretches. His full. leg is obliterating. The obliterating. I got no room there. And this is why I have to have an aisle seat or a first class seat on a plane. I can't sit next to people. I can't. I'm too. I'm just, I got birth and hips. My leg. <laughs> you know? Yeah, my, man. Yeah. We, my leg has. We know. I've never even grazed the toilet well, paper I mean, dispenser. It's, it blew my mind. And then when I saw it, I was like, yeah, that, that looks uncomfortable. It's a, it's a real problem. You got to get a side oh. saddle. <laughs> just, just, like what, what is that on called? The What's that called when they're side saddling? That's side what it's saddling. Side saddling. Yeah. <laughs> full sideways. Oh my gosh! You got to do that sometime. I'm going to try it out. I mean, if I've got to oh. go in that room, that's the only way now. I'll side saddle. Oh my it. goodness! So, so long story short, your birthing hips could fit through the lanes they're opening up for DeAndre. Yes, Swift. that's. I wanted to illustrate how large these holes of the Philadelphia <laughs> offensive line. Are. Uh Dallas Goddard is the uh biggest question in this game. Yeah, he is. And he's he's one that hopefully I mean, I got a lot of people last night. They said they pivoted off of Goddard and started Logan Thomas, and I'm proud of you. I think that's a great call. Um it's not that Goddard can't perform, it's that Goddard hasn't. Through four games, I mean, this is uh this is not a startable tight end. I'd okay. play Zach Ertz. 
hold on. Hold on. Over I want to be Goddard. really, really real here because this is important. And I'm it, that's disgusting. Zach, this is... This, <laughs> You're okay. really dealing with it. I am really dealing with it because this is a very good matchup. Where you beat the Rams is at the tight end position. They play a lot of zone. This is this is actually, I, I want to bring this up, like this is a Devonta Smith game uh, to me over an A.J. Brown game. Not that, I mean, they're both going to be great. But like, Devonta Smith is their zone beater. A.J. Brown is their man beater. And they're, the, they're going to play a lot of zone. Well, that is also susceptible to the tight end position. A quality tight end that could sit in those zones has really been destroying uh, the, the Rams. Yes. So here's Dallas Goddard, a very talented player, a very talented tight end who has had success before in a plus matchup. It seems like you should be starting Dallas Goddard. But You're allowed been, to call the breakout, man. He's He's been absolutely trash. So I just want to know, this game, if you – because I think – a lot of people right now who had Dallas Goddard have picked up Tyler Higby, and they're rostering both of these players. They're basically the same price in in um, you know Draft DraftKings. Kings. Which one of these players has the better game? It's a tough call to be honest. With Cooper Cup returning and all the options in the passing game, Higby has been a product often of uh, opportunity, not necessity, uh, or necessity, necessity yes. of opportunity. Yeah, necessity over like being the focal point of an offense. Both teams have struggled against tight ends. I, I would say that I would play Higby in that in that scenario. Yeah, I would too. <clears throat> but I get it. I think both could have successful games. This could be the breakout week. They keep talking about it, and talk is cheap. Show it to us. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break and then move on to the Bengals Cardinals. I've thought about it through that ad break. I'm playing Dallas Goddard. Okay. Over Higby? Over or Higby. just like you know, No, I over Higby. I'm okay. I'm I'm playing Dallas Goddard. All right. Uh the Bengals one and three, the Cardinals one and three. The DK Sportsbook line has the Bengals minus three in this one on the road in Arizona. The over under is forty four points. Um speaking of Tyler Higby, Josh Burrow or Joe Burrow is averaging one fantasy point more per game than Tyler Higby. <laughs> what? So, to just to highlight, if if you weren't sure, is Joe Burrow playing bad? I feel like we are two weeks later uh, or ahead. I mean, of the situation with Justin Fields, like we know the truth, we know what the capability is. But if you need a break, you can take it. Like he should be able to dominate in this game. The Cardinals are the second worst team against fantasy quarterbacks, according to schedule adjusted fantasy points given up. They're terrible against the run game. Daniel Jones had his great game. but Brock Purdy was very good in the end against the Cardinals. What's weird to me is that when you watch the Bengals play football, it the, the same truths that we will outlay as to why Joe Burrow should be breaking out and why Jamar Chase should be fine and why everything should go right, all of those things have been true in every single matchup that they've had. Mm -hmm. It's always been, why aren't you throwing the ball to Jamar Chase more? Why are you getting rid of it in the, uh, to underneath so often? Like all of those things are true, so it is an it's on the road. Arizona has been a more formidable opponent than some have expected. Uh, it, it's just a little shaky, right? Like you can't play Joe Burrow with five star confidence. He's a he's a three star. I hope you come back at, to form. Player. At best, yeah, I yeah, I'm, I feel like he's a a one star must bench. You know, when we were talking about um, the matchup for Denver two weeks ago with Justin Fields, this feels very different. To me, I was saying I would start Justin Fields. Um, his his bad games were 15 fantasy points, and you knew he has the ability to go nuclear because he did it last season over and over. Now, we know Joe Burrow can go nuclear, but his bad games have been Tyler Higby at quarterback. You can't have that. Also, you lose T. Higgins. Um, last week... Yeah, he has not been practicing. Very doubtful. Last week, uh, it was a perfect matchup against the Tennessee Titans, but the immobile... Uh, you know, life of Joe Burrow in the pocket was not a good experience. He was on his back all the time. I, I, I couldn't believe he made it out of there with his right shoulder intact the amount of times his throwing arm got just hammered mid-throw. So for me, you hold on to Joe Burrow. I think it's going to be several more weeks before he's good, and but you put him on your bench. There are there are like six uh, journeyman-style quarterbacks that I would rather play, like Matthew Stafford. Sure. I would so much rather play Matthew Stafford than Joe Burrow this week. And 
Should he go off? Great. You had a good performance. Purdy. Maybe you can have – oh, I would play Purdy. I mean, any, any – Dobbs in the same game? So that was the real question to me. Was this matchup Dobbs v. Burrow? I decided to make Dobbs one spot ahead of Burrow in my personal rankings. If I had them both, I would put the mobile Russian quarterback who's had multiple good performances this year who's playing at home in over Burrow. It feels bad, but do not drop Burrow. He will recover at some point in the second half of the season. Will be great. That being said, Jamar Chase is fine. Jamar Chase, you know, he's had over ten targets per game on average. Now yeah, he'll without, get that in this game too. He's been loud. Yeah, for sure. Uh, th this is uh, I, you know, sit Joe Burrow. In my opinion, play uh, Jamar Chase for sure. Twelve design runs or twelve rushes by Josh Dobbs last week. Plenty of design runs. You're seeing the emergence of Michael Wilson. You're seeing Hollywood Brown on 153 target pace over the last three weeks kind of putting together a fantasy output uh, that is consistent. James Conner, Zach Ertz, uh, I think all of those guys are in play this week. Now, Michael Wilson's the one where it's like, you know, you're chasing a little bit because he had a good week two weeks ago, but it was on two passes, and one of them was a broken play where they didn't cover him, and he just ran wild and free. Now, last week it was seven targets, seven catches, two touchdowns. If I'm looking at Hollywood and Michael Wilson, I'm just – playing Hollywood for sure Hollywood is the uh, the first read the more targeted player the better player um, Michael Wilson is a very interesting name that I think you want on your bench and in like DraftKings, he's absurd you know that's where whenever you've got these guys that's like man I see I see a sliver of hope for a player that I'm not sure in my redraft leagues if I can get him in that's where it's really fun to 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 capitalize on them in a, in a draft kings lineup I think he's 3700 he's sub 4000 for a player who just went seven for 70 and two touchdowns all right Mike any other thoughts on this game we've talked about Zach Ertz at length this week he is viable in this matchup Tyler Boyd would be a flex consideration yeah I have not would, my Boyd <laughs> not Tyler Boyd not for you he's not my Michael boy. Wilson Tyler Boyd Michael Wilson Okay. Although we are starting Tyler Boyd. Now. Yes. Uh, we have I, to. I, he is a startable player. He should see 25 plus percent of the targets. Uh, I'm not going to hit the button for this, but a quick update on Saquon Barkley before we move on to our next matchup. I have a, I, I said it yesterday. Pessimistic. I just have a bad feeling about it. Saquon is running around today. Brian Dable said the Giants' status for the RB will go up until game time. Now, if he plays, you play him. He's Saquon. Uh, but I, you're going to need a pivot option. Hopefully you have that. Uh, what what time is that game? That's one of the early ones, one o'clock Eastern okay, time. Okay, so so you're gonna you're gonna hear, but it might not be till very late. Wow, this guy's been day to day for weeks. It, it's just like I said yesterday. If it really is a high ankle sprain, it's still a little too soon. Usually, I brought this up uh, earlier. If you historically, if you have a high ankle sprain. Most common, you either miss zero games or you miss three games. Those are the numbers that are 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 much much higher um, than any other option. He's missed two games so far. So missing this week, the math would check out with just what the the norm is. Also, Giants, get rid of him. Put put him somewhere. <laughs> put him somewhere where he can be of value. You realize the Giants are one and three, and now play Miami and Buffalo. Yeah, you're not going to see a lot of smiles from Brian Dable in the next couple of weeks. The Jets are 1-3. and three, The Broncos are 1-3. and three, The game's in Denver. The DK Sportsbook line Broncos, 2.5-point favorites. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. Uh, I'm looking at the Broncos' defense and the numbers they're giving up. <laughs> Dear goodness. Uh, 25 points a game to it's quarterbacks. Impressive. 41 to running backs. Those are both dead last in the league. 36 to wide receivers and why not just toss 13 points to the tight end it really makes this game tough because you you just can't have you can't have strong confidence in Zach Wilson the player you can have strong confidence in the matchup you can have strong confidence in Brees Hall you can have strong confidence in Garrett Wilson and the targets and the and the talent but there is a dependency here it's like it all runs through the the one uh whatever the the gear that has to, to move a little bit is Zach Wilson. Now, it all sets up for him to be able to do it, but his games, his collapses are not middle of the road. They are kind of utter garbage They're situations. They're getting benched at halftime with negative fantasy points. And, that's and, that's yeah, what exactly. could happen. And he, he played so well against Kansas City, but one of the reasons why is because the team decided to let him throw the ball a little bit. 
they could they knew it was Kansas City. They knew they could not just hand the ball off to Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook and not let him throw the football. There's a chance that they can let him chill out in this. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I there mean, is a chance it, that they shut Denver down. He threw it 36 times the week before against the Patriots. The the way that I see this is is actually pretty easy and obvious for the Jets. Like because of the matchup against the Broncos, when you have actual talented players, you need to have them in your starting lineup. That's why Brees Hall is in and Garrett Wilson is in. The combination of their talent with this matchup says you don't want the opportunity for a huge explosion on your bench. The the bad defense means that Zach Wilson and Tyler Conklin, because the Vance Joseph-led teams are just tight end. I mean, that, Cole Komet went crazy last week. <clears throat> Those players are guys you can start if you really need a pivot option. Mm-hmm. That's so outside of those four and that method, I think that's the Jets for me. Are you surprised the Broncos are two and a half point favorites in this one? I was really surprised. I yeah. am, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, like, give them the home, the the home field advantage, make it be a one point. But I'm I'm surprised it's at two and a half. The the area in which the Jets have been giving up fantasy production and fantasy points, their defense has been great against the quarterback and the wide receivers, but. The running back and the tight end is where they've given up points. Now, you don't really have a tight end in Denver. You don't Adam, really have no. a running back. That Well, that's the thing. It's like the, the weakness is like I feel like the Jets could come out here, maybe impose their will. You know, you hope you get the production in the passing game early from Zach Wilson and Garrett Wilson because there, there could be some – you know, Vegas doesn't see it that way. Vegas sees the Broncos as favorites. Russell so, Wilson has been very, very good uh, in two quarterback better, leagues. Yeah. I've been starting him almost every week in, in where, I, where I have him. This is a week where if I've got other options that I could bench, you know, I'd, I'd be starting someone like a Brock Purdy over Russell Wilson, uh, Matthew Stafford over Russell Wilson. I would like to bench him this week despite the fact that for fantasy he's been okay. Really, 4,300 yards and 38 touchdowns is his pace. There is not. There is not a Bronco I want to start, not one single one, including Cortland Sutton, who's been good for fantasy. But when we look at our expected points model, uh, Mar uh, you know we've we've got a great article coming out by Marvin the Martian every week, and uh, it shows like his expected fantasy points is like wide. It's like not in the top forty wide receivers. He's so just scored three times, right? So then you put that up against the Jets, and it's like no, I'm 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 looking to pivot off of all Denver options. Well, what if Michael like Wilson, Cortland Sutton? Mm -hmm. That's really push comes to shove. That's a tough one. It is tough. I lean I lean Michael Wilson because of the Jets. For Javante Williams, I know he did he practiced he was limited. I think there's still a chance that he doesn't play. So let just in that hypothetical, if he doesn't play, does that change things for you at all, Jason, of like Jaleel or P Ryan? Not really. Um, I, I still am Jaleel ahead of P. Ryan if Javante is out just for the the you know explosive opportunity to just break a play off. He's he's got you know four four speed, um, but I would rather not. I mean the, right. the 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 truth is whoever spent forty plus on Jaleel is either dumb because they they spent too much or they really need him and that's yeah. why they spent too much and so this might not be a choice they have. Kansas City's three and one, and they take on the one and three Minnesota Vikings. The DK Sportsbook line: Chiefs minus three and a half on the road. The over/under is a rather delicious fifty-two and a half points. Okay. Kirk Cousins has finished the uh, as the quarterback nine, two, four, and twenty-two. Yeah. yeah Guess which one was the their victory? <laughs> right. <laughs> so it weird. was the last one. Yeah. Uh, you've had. Uh, emergent performances from Alexander Madison for the past couple of weeks. Akers had seven opportunities and 51 yards in the debut. I do think they will work him in more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree. Jefferson, don't need to talk about him. I'm sorry. If you if you have him, congratulations. We never need to talk about him because you always play him. Jordan Addison is another, uh, you know, he he's going to be volatile just based on the fact that he's not out there for every snap and the fact that, you know, last last game he had one target. Yeah, he was only out there for 58% of the snaps, but that was a game where you were winning. You were destroying the, the, the Panthers despite the pick six in the beginning, and it was a game where they thought, we're not going to throw the ball much at all. So this was a really different scheme than what we saw for the first three weeks for the Vikings. 
I blame that on the matchup, you know, against Carolina. You know, they 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 executed it great, and Alexander Madison was running really, really well. I don't know that you're going to possibly put that kind of a game plan in place for the Kansas City Chiefs. That being said, I he, to me he is a he's not a must start by any no stretch. no. I think but he's, he's a can start. He's a can start. He's a risky start. Uh, when he does catch the ball, it has not been for – if he's not catching that long pass, it's been kind of short yardage, Zay Flower stuff. Hawkinson going, is a must start. Are you going to go Tank Dell or Jordan Addison? I'll play Tank Dell. Yeah, that's that's really tough. Um, I see them very, very similarly. I, I feel fair. like I want, the, I want the big play opportunity of a Kansas City Chief game here. Um, man, is this prime time? I don't know. Where's no. Cousins? All right, no. no? Not- yeah, then Addison. Okay. Uh, Jerry Judy in that Jets matchup. Or yeah, Jordan I'll play Addison. Judy. I'm going Addison there. All right. Interesting. Chiefs only given up 23 fantasy points a game to wideouts. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, 21 of them will probably be jo- Justin <laughs> Jefferson. Uh, Alexander Madison or Raheem Mostert? Mostert, Mostert, for sure. Okay. Yeah, this matchup's not good for running backs. Chiefs defense, fifth in the league in schedule adjusted. You can play your Chiefs running back, Isaiah Pacheco. He has been back-to-back top 12. He looks really, really good. Um, they've thrown him the ball a little bit. Uh, I, I I see the separation between the other options they have and Isaiah Pacheco right now. And this is coming from a guy that didn't see that two weeks ago and ended up with Pacheco's big game on my bench. But I think Isaiah Pacheco is just solidifying. And, he's, and we mentioned that he was one of those guys that you forget that he was injured all preseason and wearing a non-contact jersey through a lot of training camp. So it's not the biggest surprise that it's taken some time, but Pacheco is taking over. Yeah, he's at 4.9 a carry on the year now. Patrick Mahomes, of course. Uh, wide receivers in Kansas City. Oh, man. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah. I'm st- the matchup is great. Someone will do something. Someone will do something. That's that's is it a DFS Rice start or throw. Rice, Tony, Moore, MBS, Watson, R- and Justin Ross. I picked up Justin Ross. Really? I did. Didn't he have like a snap or something? Oh last yeah, week? he's barely playing. Okay, I mean, yeah. I picked him up because I feel like the, the there's a kind of an outcry in Kansas City to get him more snaps because he's he just looks better than the other receivers there. Yeah. Sky Moore's numbers. I mean, when you talk about any metric that matters as a wide receiver have been atrocious. You know I'm not a Sky Moore fan. I'm not an MVS fan. Kadarius Tony has proven that he will never be on the field more than 15% of snaps. Not that any one of those guys couldn't get a touchdown, but if I had to put a wide receiver out there to have a big game against the Minnesota Vikings, it would be Rushy Rice. It's a rookie who has looked good. Like, Sky Moore as a rookie never looked good. R- Rushy Rice has looked good, and we we brought this up. Two different drives, two different plays. He was a yard away from a touchdown. He gets two more yards. Um, and in a couple weeks ago, you're you're talking about a guy who has a multi-touchdown Kansas City Chiefs game, and and Rushy Rice would be the number one waiver pickup and and play. So he's the guy I would take a shot at. But I'm not going to start in redraft leagues, any of them. Play Kelsey. Yeah, Travis Kelsey is my wide receiver of choice. <laughs> nice. The Dallas Cowboys are three and one. Sunday night football. This should be fun. Taking on the 49ers in prime time. 49ers have been on fire. They are three and a half point home favorites, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. The over under 44 and a half. It gives Dallas an implied point total of uh, just over 20. The 49ers at 24. I believe they've scored over 30 in every one of their games so far. Uh, you can verify I that. I will look at that. <clears throat> and but you are, well. They've scored 30, 30, 30, and 35. So over 30 in just one game. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I mean, I stand mm. corrected. I, like, I hate to bring the facts to you. Yeah. But scored over you 30. You were way off. Scoring 30 is not over 30. He did no, not. it isn't. I'm wrong. Scored yeah. at least 30. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Bro. See, I would have came in here and been like, incredible memory, Andy. You <laughs> nailed it. But instead, I had to tell you. What you're a very, fool. You're very wrong. No, yeah, I'm like You're a, wrong 75% <laughs> of the time. Yeah, thank that you. is very wrong. <laughs> uh here it came out that Debo was basically a decoy in the last game, didn't receive a target. Not going to be playing this game at 100%. I need to hear from you two what your approach to Debo Samuel is this week. It's a game where they will need their weapons. It's a tough defense. They can't simply hand the ball to McC- oh, maybe they can, but they 
and against Arizona, you could give it to McCaffrey on every play, and it would always work. I think in this game, you're going to need to see some more uh, inventive play calling. What do you do with Debo, though, as a start-sit decision? I have him exactly like what we just talked about with um, Amon Ross St. Brown. I have them literally back-to-back um, where uh, – You're trying not to – to if if I've got other good options, other wide receivers that I like that I think can have a, a, a they got to be good though. Yeah, well, yeah, like, yeah. Let me give you a flex decision. Would you rather play? Um, like you've got Garrett asking Wilson. for a friend. Would you rather play Damian Pierce against Atlanta, or would you rather play Debo Samuel? Not that I'll be listening to you. Not that it's <laughs> about me. That one is really really tough in the flex. Uh, I I I lean uh, I lean Damian Pierce, but I'm curious where you are on that one, Mike. I would take the points from Pierce. So, Brandon Ayuk, you're starting him in a tough matchup. Yeah. George Kittle? Hey, I mean. Hoping for a little biddle? Uh, yeah, it's like. One I mean, catch against Arizona, and that was supposed to be. Extraordinarily disappointing, especially when you have uh, Debo accurately being, you know, a, a, an injured, unused player on the field. That's usually where Kittle goes off. Three points, four points, one point, and 12 on the year. Extreme selfishness from Christian McCaffrey. If I'm being honest, he was just so rude well, to Well, going to need him to be a little more selfish. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need him to be a lot selfish. Yes. Week, Mike. I mean, Kittle is a guy where it's like we, we've seen this for years now. Kittle's bad games. This is why in draft season I said like I, he was our number one like bust pick. We didn't like drafting him. The reason is because his bad games are not acceptable bad games. They're not where you've got eight points and you're disappointed. They're where he's got three points and he ruins a, and you a slot on your roster. That being said, his big games are the exact opposite. He's one of the only tight ends in the league that can go out there and put up 30. Um, if you have him, I would be surprised that you have a better pivot option. Um, you know, like, for instance, Zach Ertz, we've talked about, He's a good play. He's, he's getting enough targets. He's He is a safe, put him in your tight end slot. But if I had both those players, recognizing that Kittle could easily go out there and give me three points, I'm still playing Kittle. Because it's not that Zach Ertz can't also give me three points. He will probably not. He'll probably get me seven. But those four points aren't worth losing out on 25 extra points from my bench. So that's kind of how I see it. Um, and personally, the second that I get a big monstrous game from George Kittle, I am trading him. What about the tight end on the other side? It's a popular start sit question on the website. Jake Ferguson. It's very similar to how I see Ertz uh, because the the matchup is not great against the 49ers, but he's he's very involved. I mean, his target share. Let me pull it up real quick. On it's, pace for just over 100 targets. I mean, like 19%. Weeks three and four. I mean that that's that's fine. That that is absolutely fine for for someone who we got off of the waiver wire or very late in the draft. Uh, he did finish as wow. What somehow he finishes the tight end six. Goodness yeah, but how many points with uh, eleven point two and a oh, half points? Not bad. I mean, he was because he was seven for seventy seven. I'm just so, like, how are you the tight end six with no touchdown? That's that's pretty wild. So yeah, he, I'm I'm gonna keep playing him. Dak features him a lot in the red zone. What about the wide receivers beyond CeeDee Lamb in this game for the Cowboys? I don't love uh, starting them. There's a couple places in a pinch where I have chosen to put Michael Gallup into my lineup. He's been um, pretty good. Six receptions, five receptions the last two weeks with 92 and 60 yards. Um, you know, he's now two years removed from his injury. He's a little bit younger than Brandon Cooks. He would be the guy that I would choose personally. Um, and I see him as, you know, a a wide receiver four. So hopefully you have a better option. Mike, any other thoughts on the – I mean, Tony Pollard, Christian McCaffrey, obviously locked into your lineup. Right. Is Dak a full required benching this week? Uh, I don't think he's a full benching. I, I was going to bring him up. Would you rather play Dak or Joe Burrow? Dak. Yeah, so that, that, that to me is – that means Dak is not a full benching. He's in a void if possible. Like right now I have my rankings. I'd have Garoppolo in. I'd have Josh Dobbs in. Uh, I think I'd play Burrow. Over Dak? Yeah, because I know I know that Cincinnati is going to be able to put up some points against Arizona. I mean, Dak, is not, Dak has been almost as bad as Burrow. 
Mm. Dak is uh, he has quarterback he has 29, 17, 19, 19. fantasy wise, but he as which a, is what we're talking about. No, I, I know, I know, but I'm saying, but Joe Burrow has been a bad fantasy quarterback, and he's been a bad quarterback. Like Dak is still playing well. He's just not. There's no. He, there hasn't been this. He's need been in a couple him. blowout wins yes. where it's like, okay, you're. They haven't needed to put up a huge amount of points. Okay, and in I maybe this is just overall a low scoring game. But I, this is a matchup that, like San Francisco is going to score. That you just incorrectly pointed out, you know, thirty plus points, but at least thirty points. I remember in, I did that in every one of their matchups. Yeah. Like they're going to score on Dallas. That was super embarrassing. <laughs> I can't believe he said yeah, that. I know. To be that we, wrong, yes. three three fourths wrong. Should yeah. we should we edit it? Uh, I mean, that was we'll real talk bad. After the show okay. and see, maybe hey, they might not even know be what hearing we're talking this. about now. Yeah. Uh, the Green Bay Packers two and two taking on the Las Vegas Raiders on Monday night. Jordan Love back in prime time. Jason start of the week. Now, Jason, you look like you might have suffered some sort of uh, sitting you, injury. You just realized something. The Raiders are favored in this game. The S DraftKings Sportsbook line: Raiders minus one. The over under is forty five. Is that what we're still? Did they are? get a new head coach <laughs> that quick? Because I didn't think they had one on Thursday. <laughs> well. So you're shocked. It's in Las Vegas. I mean, I know they're home, but... Now, the Packers, I mean, the Packers... Which way do you lean, Andy? You, you're you better at the lines than I am. Do you think... I think that, it'll be close. You think this is an appropriate line? Would you have set the line as Raiders minus one? Is it, no, as I would have set it at Packers minus one. Okay. Yeah, the... the uh, well, yep, still Raiders minus one. Let's, let's just, um, let's just take a, a holistic view. I think the impression of week one where Jordan Love went out and they whooped the Bears... 38 to 20 and he didn't throw any uh I don't think he threw any interceptions and they went out and smashed him I think that impression is settled onto people but since then they lost to Atlanta they lost to Detroit they had a they were getting their butts kicked in New Orleans yes. and somehow pulled out the 18-17 victory which is not a lot of points what's funny is that was the opposite from the week before that momentum from week one carried right into Atlanta and they started kicking the the, the butts pants. off of the, the butt. They the, kicked their butts they off. They kicked their butts off <laughs> in Atlanta, <laughs> and then somehow lost that My game cheeks. at the end. <laughs> it was. It was. You're right, though. In in uh, in New Orleans, or or uh, that would that was in Green Bay, but against the Saints, um, they were trash and somehow came back and won. They, this is a bit of an indictment on the offense. I think. I think you're you're just kind of seeing Vegas say, "Well, we're not. We don't have confidence. We don't believe. We." And maybe Jordan Love comes out and impresses, but it was really kind of ugly last last time out. And uh, maybe it's also a little bit of a equivocation on the health of Aaron Jones, who didn't play a lot, the health of Christian Watson, who didn't play a lot, the ability of AJ Dillon, the ability of AJ who Dillon shouldn't play a lot. So yeah, some of it's injury, some of it's confidence, and then the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, they do get Jimmy Garoppolo back. Devontae Adams, I think we expect to be back out there. It's a weird one. Yeah, I mean, I I, I do understand it. Um, I, I'm just surprised because the way that I view it is that the Green Bay Packers offense now is rounding into the shape that they wanted to start the season that they still haven't really had yet, which is a fully healthy Aaron Jones, a fully healthy Christian Watson. So this should be, um, and uh, Luke Musgrave, appears like he's going to pass the concussion protocol. Um, he practiced Thursday, so he's on track to play. So this should be like a full-go offense um, against a defense who has been pretty darn bad for a while. So I guess that's where I'm just surprised. I think that the Green Bay Packers will be able to score. Now, for fantasy purposes, who does that mean you can start? It's tough. R Romeo Dobbs would be my number one. I would yeah, put him in first in because I think me. he's the highest read target. I'd have the most confidence, but it's also hard to bench Christian Watson when you can do what he can do. So I feel like I'm playing both those guys. The last two games, Jordan Love's passer rating was 66 and 69. He took six sacks. He threw three interceptions and had two touchdowns. So maybe a little bit of that. Now, his his fantasy production was was fine because he scored on the ground in both those games. But uh, just throwing it out there, passer rating for Jimmy G on the year is 83. It's really not been bad. Mike, you brought this up, yeah. I think, in the studio the other day. Um, Josh Jacobs finally had a big fantasy game last week, and he will continue it. I really I did, did see the Adams going out. 
to me was very fundamental to it because You're he got because he got so much work. He had in the eleven game. targets, but it was an Aiden O'Connell game too, right? It was. Yes. That being said, some of his actual runs just looked great. You have to remember that he missed. He held out. Fat tra Thor tr training camp. He came in as Fat Thor. What happened in that movie? I can't believe that's came come true. <laughs> yeah, he got he rounded into shape or uh, thinned into shape. He's he's still Fat Thor to me. You're saying Josh Jacobs is still Fat Thor? Yeah, I mean he was seven, da, 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 da. he was seventeen for fifty eight on the ground. Uh, like he, that's when you watch the actual plays, he looked like he had the juice. So it it might not have worked out, but Green Bay hasn't it's, really it's been able to stop to anyone, and right. I think it's going to keep rolling. I, you know, it's similar to last year. Like Josh Jacobs got off to a slow start. I think he's going to have – we know the volume is there, right? I mean, we, yes. we don't really need to talk about this because no one's benching Josh Jacobs, but I do think he has a really good game this week. If Watson or Jones are active, are you playing either one? Yeah. I'm, it I'm, would freak me out a little bit. I think I'm playing both. So last game, Jones played 35% of snaps. Watson was – where was he at? I think he played just under 46 percent Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can see both players just taking the chance, getting them out there. Yeah, this is week two, and those guys are good at scoring yep. touchdowns. I would play them both. Okay. Well, time to move on. Oh, yay. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Well, 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 we are four weeks into the season, and Mike is just sitting there in his second <laughs> place seat where every sitting week. Sitting in your number two. Hey, we're simmering, boys. Uh, it's a every, nice, light simmer. Number two. Every single week, Mike has finished in second place. The first two weeks, I was on top, Jason on the bottom. And the last two weeks, well, uh, unfortunately, I have reprised my role as a as, uh, shamed fantasy face-off loser. You're trying to ride too hot, man. Don't ride hot, don't ride cold. Just, just Goldilocks' this thing, yeah. huh? Hey, Andy. Yeah. When I finish first this week, hmm. I'm going to be rooting for you to finish second. Yeah, Does that make okay. you feel good? Yeah, sure. I've got <laughs> I've got the perfect oh, no. second place lineup. Oh, boys. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to it. I am the loser last week. Jason won it. Mike was second. I was third. And let's spin that wheel. Wheel of Shame. Well, let's go ahead and spin that wheel. Maybe it'll land on getting a haircut, you know, with a hat on. Um, where is he? Was that a silly wabbit? I saw. Geezer, <laughs> cowboy. Flower power. What in the world does that say? That's really small font. It says strawberry shortcake. <laughs> oh, strawberry shortcake. Straw baba berry. <laughs> do I need strawberry to shortcake. Wait, oh, so yeah. I need I need like a whole Yeah, you got we could do a little uh little <laughs> strawberry costume shortcake. change here. Oh, Andy uh, is becoming a huge think, strawberry. It's what a sweetheart. I mean, I don't I want to I don't want to be that guy, but it's on backwards. Just letting you know. <laughs> oh, I have the backwards strawberry. Well, I think yeah. you I get, think you're all you right. You got the class. I, I mean, I just, I wanted to see another yeah. for real, but Oh, all right. <laughs> You're telling me I need to, ro no, me to rotate no, the strawberry? No, I, yeah, I'm, rotate the strawberry. I'm, you could do it. You I'm do guessing it. that the other Just side like the looks kids do. <laughs> There goes, the, there goes uh, what, that the stem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, man. Hurry up. The audience is listening. We're good. We're all good. Right. We're moving on. Okay, Mike, okay. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, I look ridiculous. Um, all where, right. Well, we, we now we get to talk about our lineups. Where's the cake part? I just is a strawberry, so I just <laughs> need a strawberry shortcake. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's it's jump a in. Low hanging fruit. Yeah. Oh okay. boy. All oh right. boy. Well, thank you, thank you, Jason. I. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, you just um, you, uh, you honestly, it's 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 kind. I don't. I didn't put a mask on your face or anything. There's no lipstick. But tattoos. You look stupid. And that's yeah. what matters. Well, let's jump in. Quarterbacks. Uh, I'm gonna kick it off. Okay. I'm spending 7100 on a quarterback. Mm, I had him. I had him, but I pivoted. Tua Tungavailoa. Uh, I'm going to take the bounce back performance at home okay. against the Giants. Uh, I had strongly considered both Zach Wilson and Matthew Stafford, but I went with Tua. So yesterday I had Tua in my lineup, and I switched because of our discussion on would you rather play Tua or Anthony Richardson. And I realized – I think Anthony Richardson is the better play this week, and he's a hundred dollars cheaper. So, so you took him. I took Anthony Richardson at seven thousand. 
Mike, who's your starting quarterback? I was in that discussion. I was on the side of Tua, but I did not have a hundred dollars, so I also have Anthony Richardson. Well, this is setting up great, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, my running back starts. I spent seventy seven hundred. I'm guessing we all did. Yeah. Bijan Robinson. Yes. Bijan is a so check. he's on all of our lineups. Yes. Check. He's playing the Houston Texans. Well, there you go. And then my second running back. I'm guessing we all have the same second nope. running back. I pivoted 6, out. Sixty three hundred. Nope. Alvin Kamara. I'm taking Alvin oh, Kamara in the PPR. Trying to get them 40 oh, receiving yards. Oh, he's on got, I don't care. Catches. Oh, it's so delicious. His <laughs> fantasy output in, in DraftKings was wonderful last week. It was wonderful. My second running back is David Montgomery at 6,600 oh. home against the Carolina Panthers. I was in the wrong. Game favored by 10. Uh, we're a three for three so far, Jay. <laughs> okay, so we've, we, Mike and I have Anthony Richardson, wow. B. John Robinson, I, and David Montgomery. I. Broke the rules. I went last second. I went pivot right before the show started because I didn't want to match your running back. Who I well was getting that, but I have David Montgomery. He's in my flat. Okay. <laughs> we have. I have a very different lineup than you two. Yeah. Uh, my wide receiver oh my core. God. We're gonna have me and Jay are gonna have a fourth here too. Uh, my maybe a fifth wide receiver core is Tyreek Hill. Yep. At uh, nine thousand to <laughs> stack with Tua. It's Garrett Wilson mm. at 6,000 against Denver, and it is the previously mentioned – you guys probably both have him now. I found him. I found Wondell Robinson? Yeah, Wondell Robinson for 3,000 3, uh, because he was just mispriced. Yeah, at 3,000 you have to have Wondell in there for uh, – Which I assume lineup. you both do? I do as well. Uh, at wide receiver, I have Jamar Chase at 7,900 ah. against the Arizona Cardinals. He's still been getting a ton of targets, has the talent. Tried to, that last week. Didn't work for it. me. Um, I have Adam Thielen, who I had last week as well. Still, he's gone up a little bit in price, but at 5,100. Um, it's a good price. He, he's just been a PPR machine. So it's Jamar Chase, Adam Thielen, and Wandale Robbins. So I have, I have the Wandale overlap with Andy. I have Garrett Wilson overlapping with Andy. But I took I took my stack, baby. I got your start of the weekend there, Jay. Mm. I have Michael Pittman Jr. Hopefully, I, I have Richardson in because of his rushing ability, but you can throw on the Tennessee Titans, and hopefully Michael Pittman is the one getting it done at 6,400. So I'm I'm completely live with Tyreek Hill. Yes, yeah. you are. It, that that feels, stack is going to be pretty good. very important. Uh, all right, rounding it out, I've got a couple of Cardinals. My tight end is Zach Ertz at 3,500. My flex, I went with the heavily targeted recently, Hollywood Brown at 5000 He's completely mispriced. And uh, I closed it out with the Titans defense against Anthony Richardson uh. and the Colts after that good performance last week at just 2400 I have nothing left in my salary. Ertz, Hollywood, Titans. I talked about it on today's episode. I am, I am going with Dallas Goddard over Tyler Higby at 4200 um, in a full PPR against the Rams, I think he should bounce back this week. I have the Jets defense uh, on the road against Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. What's that price? Thirty one hundred. Okay, so, so about I felt like it was six hundred more than cheap enough Titans. to do it. But then, of course, there's no way I would play this week um, without Brees Hall, who is only fifty four hundred against the Denver uh, Gash Me If You Canigans. <laughs> Um, so I will. Is that that DiCaprio movie? <laughs> yes. Uh, so Dallas Goddard, Brees Hall, and the Jets. I have Hollywood Brown at five thousand. I have the Arizona Cardinals at twenty eight hundred at home against uh the bums <laughs> over there. It's from Cincinnati, and then coming in at just a nice. Spent up a tight end. Mr. Mark Andrews. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Very nice. Um. Should Who be is fun. super mispriced. Yeah, I I thought we were going to have a match there too. All right, well there you go. That is, uh, we'll see if I end up looking like this again next week. Hopefully we can get Mike, Jason. This should be a full. Uh, like, did we you are, hear that roster? <laughs> right in the mid. Uh, it, it it really <laughs> seems like I will be on top or on the bottom because you guys have so many overlapping players. If Tyreek has a bad game, you'll be on bottom. If Tyreek has a ham game, you'll be on top. That's what it seems like. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, 
That's true. Tyreek Hill, Tua, both players. They got me a W in week one against you two fellows, so I'm hoping that that's what happens. Now, Mike, I have some uh, very sad news for you. Oh, no. Yeah, I know you are going to go fly fishing this Sunday because you don't have a lot invested. You do have to do Ballers Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. That's fine. You can join Mike, BallersLive.com, on our YouTube, all our social channels. Quick, quick, nice, tight five-minute show this week. Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> uh, you can follow us, YouTube.com slash TheFantasyFootballers. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Shout out to Deucers Alley. Thank you guys for holding it down. We'll be back with you, like I said, Sunday live, and then we'll reflect on Monday. Should be a fun week. I look like a strawberry. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.